Okay, a couple more problems using the sum and difference formulas. Instead of writing this whole problem down, let me just show it to you, then we'll work. Actually, this problem has four parts. You see A, B, C, and D. I'll just work the first two parts, because then once you see how I do those, you can do the other parts. So hopefully you can read this. It says, if the sine theta equals 3 eighths, and theta is in quadrant two, find the exact value of, and then A, they ask for the cosine of theta, B, they ask for the sine of theta plus pi over six, then the cosine of theta minus pi over three, and the tangent of theta plus pi over four. So you notice, for instance, in a few minutes when we do part B, they're saying take the sine of this angle theta and add another angle to it. So this is really the sum of two angles, theta plus pi over six. We don't actually know what angle theta is. That's okay, we'll figure that out in a little bit. But the key is we're adding two angles together and taking the sine. So when we do, when we do that part of the problem, you'll see that we're gonna use one of the sum formulas from our formula sheet. So I did go ahead and write down the information. We were told the sine of theta is 3 eighths and it's in quadrant two. So part A, the question is what is the Well, this is actually the kind of problem we did a while ago. What I like to do is I'm gonna take this initial trig function. I'm going to go create a right triangle based upon this information. And then once I do that, I should be able to figure out the cosine. So here's my, I'm gonna build a right triangle that represents angle theta. So since the sine is 3 eighths, sine is so kato is so opposite over hypotenuse, right? Pythagorean formula allows me to get the length of this bottom side. You take the hypotenuse squared minus this side squared. Looks like the bottom side of this triangle Let me write up here, sorry, don't forget quadrant two. The bottom side of this triangle looks like it's going to be square root of 55. So now, cosine of theta, here's theta, cosine is ka, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse, square root of 55 over eight. But don't forget, this angle of theta is in quadrant two, cosine in quadrant two is always negative. So there's part A. Now really, the purpose of this problem is to figure out part B. So the question for part B is what is the sign of theta plus. I need to realize theta is an angle, pi over six is a. We don't know the actual value of theta, but it is an angle. And we do have the angle pi over six. I am now going to go look at the formula for the sine of adding two angles together. And I'm gonna write out that formula. So let me find my formula sheet because I don't have these formulas memorized. So the sine adding two angles together. So this one right here. So I'm going to write this down so I don't mess it up. So it's the sine of u plus v 
equals sine u times cosine v plus cosine u times sine v. Now for us, we'll call u theta and we'll call v power over 6. So by using this formula, the sine of theta plus power over 6 is going to be sine of u, which is sine of theta, times cosine of v, cosine of pi over 6, plus cosine of u, times the sine of v, sine of pi over 6. Now if you look at this, I know the cosine of pi over 6 and the sine of pi over 6, those are special angles. But what about sine of theta, cosine of theta? Well, that's why I created this right triangle. This right, right triangle represents the angle theta. So if I need sine of theta, actually sine of theta was given in the original problem where I could have gone to, the, to this triangle. And then I also need cosine of theta, which I can get from the triangle. Or actually that was the first part of the problem. So whatever you want to do, sine of theta is 3 eighths times the cosine of pi over 6, which is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of theta, so ka, j sin over hypotenuse, and it's going to be negative because it's quadrant 2. Negative square root of 5 over 8 times sine of pi over 6, which is just 1 half. So now, they may want me to combine this into one fraction. So this is 3 square root of 3 over 16, then minus... square root of 55 over 16. Since they have the same denominator, this is probably how they want the answer. And thankfully that is correct, just to make sure. So then for the rest of these problems, you would simply go use the other formulas. So in other words, For part C, cosine of theta minus pi over 3. So the cosine of the difference. So you go to your formula sheet, you look at the cosine of when you're subtracting, and you write it out, plug in the correct things for u and v, and you're on your way. And the same thing with tangent. This one's going to be a little messier because tangent ends up being a fraction, but... Now let me look at one more problem. It's a little bit different. And it also involves a fair amount of work. It's this one right here. It's similar to what we just did, but a little bit different. So here they say, I find the exact values of each of the following given the conditions. So they say here's tangent of alpha. So here's an angle alpha. Tangent of alpha is negative 12 over 5. And alpha is between pi over 2 and pi. That tells you that the angle alpha is in the second quadrant. Because alpha is larger than pi over 2 but less than pi. So it's Q2. Then here's a second angle, beta. And they say the sine of beta is 1 half. And they say that beta is between 0 and pi over 2, which means it's quadrant 1. And then here's what they ask for. They ask for four trig functions where you're either adding or subtracting these two angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, in this case, we'll start with um, part A. 
And I'm going to start with going to the formula sheet and writing out the formula for the sine of the sum of two angles. Just to make it clear, here's the formula sheet. Sine of u plus v. So it's sine u times cosine v plus cosine u times sine v where alpha will be u and beta will be v. Now here's where we have to go back now and take all this information they've given us about these angles. What I'm going to do is I've been given a trig function for angle alpha. I'm going to take that information and create a right triangle. And then I'm going to go take the information I'm given for angle beta. I'm given a trig function, create another right triangle for that trig function. And then I can get what I need to from beta. So in other words, tangent alpha negative 12 over 5 and we know it's in quadrant 2 so I'm going to construct a triangle for alpha toa tangent is toa opposite over adjacent sorry hypotenuse from Pythagorean formulas 144 12 squared plus 5 squared squared of 169 which is actually 13 so you'll see in a minute how I'm going to use this I'm going to do the same thing now for the information they've given us about beta. They say the sine of beta equals one half and it's in quadrant one. So the sine of beta is one half quadrant one. So the sine, so katoa, so opposite over hypotenuse and down here is going to be 4 minus 1 square root of 3. So now I've got two triangles, one that represents alpha, one that represents beta and now I should have done it here. Every place I have a u I'm going to put in alpha and a v put in beta. So sine of alpha plus beta is really sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta. So if I take that and now start plugging, so sine of alpha, I go to my alpha triangle and I said, what's the sine of alpha? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of alpha times, oh, let's check. It's in quadrant two, sine's positive, okay. Cosine beta, here's my beta triangle. Cosine beta means, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's sine of alpha times cosine of beta. Plus cosine of alpha, I go back to my alpha triangle. I'm looking at the cosine, so ka adjacent over hypotenuse. But now don't forget this alpha is in quadrant two. The cosine in quadrant two is going to be negative. Now the sine of beta, here's my beta triangle. The sine of beta, actually it's given up here. I don't have to necessarily even use the triangle, one half. So that is, 
inside of alpha plus beta 12 square root of 3 over 26 minus 5 over 26 12 square root of 3 minus 5 over 26 and thankfully that's correct so then once again I won't do the rest of these but now you just go get the formula for cosine of alpha plus beta and then you get the formula for the sine of alpha minus beta and so on and these are your triangles for alpha and beta to give you what you need.